Hello, this is Friendly Cat, and this is a guide to the three Chile Mupuchi achievements. So most of this guide is about the beginning, where it's the toughest, but we'll take it through the whole thing. We're going to be completing America decolonized. We'll also do the Chilean Empire. And last and certainly not least, we'll be taking care of Red Hot Chili Peppers, which is like a bonus achievement when you do Mapuche. Of course, we'll start in the upper left to look to tradition, our first easy focus. We're also going to be showing a little bit of the setup. We'll be building uh, convoys because we don't have any sub twos at the moment. We're going to put two factories on infantry in this guide, but I'd probably move things around and probably take one on infantry and then one on support at the beginning. Of course, delete all of our gear divisions in preparation for a civil war. Start some mills. Take commandeer civilian trains. That takes a base stability hit. Don't worry, it won't cost us a thing. We'll show that later when we do our party raids. First research is infantry weapons without an MIO, and then the basic machine tools industry tech. We'll be creating an intelligence agency whenever we have the civilian factory, so we can do collaboration governments, but not quite yet. As we continue down the tree, again, pretty simple, we can take the coup focus next and continue to move our way down with our uh, first agent. Oh, it looks like we chose, we got a good pick. I think that might be our national spirit. We're gonna send that wonderful agent up to the United States to start collaboration governments up in the United States. Continuing down the tree, let's start taking our Mapuche focuses. We will take all of those Mapuche focuses pre-Civil War, except for the upper right one that has to do with division um, division organization, but we're going to take the rest. Marines. Uh, Marines still remains pretty powerful. I think in another guide I mentioned that the special forces cap makes them weaker. Actually, I'm going to take that back. I like Marines. They work out really well. And of course, submarines have gotten on any weaker. Uh, 1936 subs, even without an MIO, still will be the powerhouse of our organization. With our collaboration, excuse me, with our um, spy network reaching more than 50%. Let's start our first collab. Ideally, we want two to three collaboration governments in the United States, and that will make it much easier for us to capitulate them and give us more factories. As our command power and average is above 40, we've got plenty. We're going to take a naval reformer expert. We want that naval experience, not just for the Marines, but also for the sub doctrines. When we reach the part of whether we can choose the communist fighters, we want them. The base stability does not hurt us, and we need communism to eventually do the chili peppers. We'll also choose the army offense advisor, which is granted by taking the pro-communist approach. As we continue down, I'm going to show a little bit more research. You're going to see my research is a little bit different than what I did on an earlier guide, because for Mapuche, for this run, we're focusing on more production. We also want to take the army spirit so that we can build up these large cavalry divisions, which we will later use when we research military police. I find that very helpful. And onwards, Axe Bearer, this is an easy one. Uh, we're gonna take the middle one for the division attack and division defense, too easy. Now on to the Civil War. All right, I hope we are all prepared. Since we deleted the divisions and took so many of the focuses, this is actually gonna not be too difficult. I'm checking to make sure that I did use that army spirit correctly before, we, or all of the cavalry related divisions before we take the army spirit to give us plus command power and plus army XP. All right, Civil War. Again, since we deleted divisions, um, as it often, often happens in a division war, we can simply convert our available divisions into cavalry, race them to the north. We're going to send an attache to China. Thankfully, uh, at least on this run, we're going to run historical, so we can count on a lot of army experience from the China-Japan War. There goes our little troops, and we will take all three of the anti-party raids and improved worker conditions. We are at zero base stability, so that costs us nothing in terms of stability, base stability. When those are done, we'll end up around 50%. Japan issues a diplomatic protest, Ooh, could cost us 7.5% base stability, but since we don't have any, it didn't cost us a thing. This was perfect timing for this run, just, I think, a good fortune. As we continue to head north, 
we're going to change and kind of spend a little bit more of our factories on support equipment as I'm having a little hard time with my collaboration governments. It's just uh, collaboration took a little bit more support than I quite realized. And that's the Civil War. No fighting, no problem, because again, we deleted our divisions and just turned our available divisions into, uh, into cavalry. Our first political power will be uh, political advisor will be that political power gain stability. That's nice, but the real gain is that minus 10% resistance. That's very, very nice. As we continue down the right side, we want to go right side because that bottom supply focus is, again, very powerful. There's a couple of very good focuses along the way. We don't want to take it right now, but we will later on take it. For now, we are racing our way down to war with Argentina. Our next advisor, in this case, I decided to take the research and non-aligned advisor. Tanks, this is what a 1938 tank looks like for me. Not too expensive, pretty decent. Its primary purpose is to give us additional armor and have a decent amount of reliability. Soft attack isn't really a priority. We will continue down superior firepower, eventually going right, right on superior firepower. As we prepare for war with Argentina, we're primarily having six with cavalry, those are those little spades, and then two with our one battalion cavalry, those are those dice uh, divisions. Their goal is not to fight Argentina. We're not going to be winning very many offensive battles. We're just going to take advantage of our ability to be fast and mobile and move around Argentina, put them into pockets, and then as necessary use our, in this case, relatively weak marines. Uh, and they've abandoned Buenos Aires. Fantastic. They're relatively close to capitulation. We haven't really had any fights. Our fighters, as usual for me anyway, are the mixed roll bomb locks in the front, machine guns on the back, and then we're going to go for the ranged MIO. And this is not a very powerful plane right now, but eventually we will build it up. Onwards, and there we go. I don't think we actually won a single offensive battle against Argentina, so very low combat. And the purpose of these wars is not to kill as many enemy divisions, it's to quickly capitulate. And here's what our industry is kind of looking like right now, just a few on tanks, a little on infantry. Our Marines, we are now building them up for our next war, which will be with Mexico. And these are gonna be 25, but eventually turned into 27 widths when we put a tank on the front. That's three line artillery. One of the keys to getting into Mexico is improving relations with Guatemala and then uh, asking for docking rights, which now lets our Navy reach all the way up to Mexico and cover our naval invasions. The Great Chilean Earthquake. I, I really hate to say it, but this game plays this out as a fantastic event for anyone who controls Chile during this time. So we get even more base stability. As you can see, our stability is now flying up quite a bit. We will be releasing Easter Island. I think that's Easter Island. I'm not exactly sure. That island off the coast of our country cost us 50 political power, but later on it will, it will open up another focus. Let's also start justifying on Mexico because we have not started attacking our other nations. We have no real worries about a guarantee. So we're going to be able to get and land not too difficult without worrying about the allies. We will also eventually go to service by requirement. We need the manpower. It's, um, we just need the manpower. And it doesn't really hurt us in terms of production because we will get so much through Lend-Lease. Landing is pretty smooth, pretty easy. We take Mexico City pretty quickly and we're just gonna continue to move through Mexico. But our goal is not to capitulate Mexico. The primary goal here is to secure and hold them as we prepare for another war with the United States. We're going to move through, and as we finally complete the last of our Mapuche focuses, we're going to move back up so we can start looking for our third research slot. It will take us until 1941 to get it, but that's okay. You know, Lend-Lease is nice, but with that whole new um, difficulty that Paradex added as far as we need to uh, have a certain amount of uh, worldwide tension, world tension. We're going to spike world tension by justifying our Japan. We're not going to go to war with Japan. We're just going to spike it and then pull the justification off just before it completes, or a day or two before it completes. Nice little encirclements. All right, this is Lend-Lease. I have a whole guide on this, but this is just a quick overview. First, we start Lend-Lease. 
with China in this case. We're going to send them Lend-Lease of everything, including trains and trucks and convoys. And then we go around and then we work, uh, improve relations with different countries, like Yugoslavia. Yugoslavia is really not a great country to improve relations because eventually they will be attacked by the Axis. And I, I really don't feel good about making them weaker before they get attacked and defeated. But, you know, thank you, Yugoslavia brothers and sisters, for your help. And that's it with just before the second world starting off. Let's finish off Mexico. We do not want to be at war with Mexico when world tension hits 100%. There's a good chance they will join the allies. But with Mexico taking control, I'm sorry, with Mexico now under our power, let's get ready for the next major role, which is guaranteeing Poland and then joining the war against Germany. We are now on the same side as the allies in their war against Germany. Uh, and the Allies, particularly Great Britain, are feeling threatened, so we will start a justification on the Philippines with the goal to eventually go to war with the United States. Our defensive divisions against the United States are those 12 with infantry, with a support artillery. I probably could have done off, started them off with 12 with cavalry, but I was just a little short on infantry weapons. Ah, we're holding pretty well. Uh, we do not hold the border with the United States. We hold territory. We hold the mountains. I'm not sure if that makes a lot of sense, but the goal is not to make sure they can't get into Mexico. Our goal is to choose the correct terrain that works for us and stay out of plain styles. We're doing pretty good. We're getting about two to one losses. That's not too bad against the United States, considering how much they overpower us. And with each passing month, we get more and more lend -lease. Our last political advisor is the non-core manpower fella, and that's going to help just a little bit with manpower right now. Our Lend-Lease, as you can see, is really kicking in here as we move toward the end of 1939. Uh, maybe 50, maybe 75 mils worth of Lend-Lease coming each month, maybe a little bit less than that, but it's a lot of Lend-Lease coming in, including Norway and the United Kingdom because we're at war with Germany. We're on the war with them on the same side. Our first encirclement. Ah, uh, yes, we've now converted those into 12 with cavalry. All the green units, those little lightning bolts, are 12 with cavalry with a single support artillery, and they've opened up the United States. The United States' front is far too wide for them here in 1939 to cover, and they will do a decent job at it, but we will move around them. We will cut them off. Oh, a landing. I like it. I'm impressed, United States. Way to get a naval landing off you. I think you missed the port a little bit right next to the west of Cancun, but we'll, we'll do okay. We're also going to use our little marine uh, divisions as hit squads to find encircled United States divisions and then just close up and destroy them. It won't take too long before our cavalry capitulates the United States. Well done. And that really effectively concludes this guide. When you're at this point and you've you own the United States, you have their fleet, you can you can go anywhere you want. The world is your oyster. You could stop right here and just play your own game. I will be playing this out, obviously. Um, but there really isn't much more I can show you that you wouldn't already be able to figure out. We will be puppeting midway, primarily so I can take uh, the military advisor uh, from them later on in a focus down the Bapuchi tree. Now, what I might suggest if you're just looking for a quick run is just move through South America, ignore the entire Atlantic, ignore excess and everyone and the, the UK. They, they don't really help you that much. But for me, I, I like to go and play. I like to play over there. I need to go to Vichy anywhere. So let's land in Vichy, France. I say I need Vichy for uh, another achievement, the one where I need to control part of mainland Pacific, the uh, I guess French Indochina, you might call it. So let's go to war with me, with Vichy. Feeling pretty good. My, my troops are pretty tough. All right, Mapuche, I'm really liking you. And look at this, we're just tearing everyone apart. This is what the world looks like. Uh, Germany's doing quite well in this run. Uh, we will eventually promote one of our admirals and then take the submarine specialist military advisor just to make our subs a little better. And, and here we are, naval invading, and this land is called Vichy, France, I believe. And this secures rubber, and it also secures territory we would need for that Ring of Fire, I think it is, achievement. It's just the first of our land. So we need to go here anyway. Might as well take it. And uh, let's take, is that uh, Sardinia? Let's go into Sardinia. Feeling pretty powerful. 
you know what? I think I think we've got the access on our on the roll. Look at this. Uh, these really are powerful troops. We're adding more and more tanks. That sword or katana or long sword, not a long. It's literally a longer sword. Would be our marines with tanks. We're getting more and more tank divisions. Once we've taken Sardinia and Corsica, onto Sicily. Let's see. Can the Axis put up a fight? Not really. Wow. Uh, Mapuche really is powerful. They've got a lot of buffs. And we're really putting it to work, and I'm feeling more and more confident. You know, I really shouldn't be messing around in Europe. There's nothing in Europe for these achievements, but why not? And besides, um, maybe I'm just used to ahistorical runs and things going sideways. So let's just get this, get these folks out of the way. As we head up Italy, we're doing encirclements. We've captured, oh, I think, a, a fair bulk of the German army down there. I think with that little pocket, I think we've got them. Let's oh, wait. Well, I'm not pink. I'm blue. Why? Why are they turning pink? Because that's right, uh, the UK has claimed the capitulation of Italy. I, I'm not really fond of that mechanic, but whatever. I didn't want the puppet anyway, so one less puppet for me is pretty good. And uh, let's move on. I mean, not the puppet wouldn't affect our achievement run as well, but let's take those three military advisors because we puppeted the United States at Midway. We take America, and then we'll also take both the French and the UK advisors. UK in particular gives a 10% army XP, and I think it's a 5% division attack. Very nice. Landing on Vichy. All right. We're still moving quite along. I'm having trouble covering this front a little bit. Ooh, and uh, okay, so Germany has now, uh, I think that's some kind of an uh, event where they can annex Vichy. So now we are directly against German land. That means Germany sees us as a direct threat. No big deal. We're Mapuche. Well, we're having a hard and hard time covering the front, so I'm making kind of a bulky garrison division. I don't normally use a division like this, nine uh, battalions of infantry, but it will help against Germany. We definitely want anti-air because Germany is owning the air. Ooh. Okay, so I probably bit off much more than I should than I could chew. I shouldn't have been messing around with Germany. I should have ignored them and just focus on the folk on my achievements. Germany doesn't really give us much as far as its achievements, but now that I've bit in, let's continue. 1940 aircraft. This is our final form of the aircraft. You'll notice we're still using mixed roll bomb locks in the front. We've got drop tanks, self sealing tanks, and armor plating, and then double heavy machine guns. Uh, these are top tier aircraft, I think, in general, and in particular for this fight. I don't have very many, very many of them, enough to make up a difference. This is what our research looks like as we continue through 1940. We're pretty much caught up toward the 1940. You may notice we haven't taken any of the electronics, but we will finally pick up trucks a little bit late. Uh, this is a good point because by cutting off into the channel, we've uh, more or less pocketed the Western German troops. I mean, technically they could escape from the channel, but with my subs out, I would take most of them with me. And in any case, they'll be reluctant. Eventually we'll push our way into Germany. It's a long fight. We are not taking Berlin, and I'm not encircling to try to use an exploit here. I just simply do not want to capitulate Germany before the Allies. If I do, the Allies will take a bunch of land, release countries, puppet, do all sorts of fun stuff. So before we capitulate Germany, we land on Great Britain. Great Britain really can't do much to stop us. They get a very short justification, like a 10-day justification, uh, which just isn't much. And since they go down first, even though I only have 13% of the war score, which may seem terrible, this is going to work out because I'm going to pass, 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 and then take any parts of the country that aren't available or that Germany or that Italy tries to release. But since they just did annex, they just tried to take states. I don't care. You can take as many as you want. In fact, if they took every land, I still wouldn't care. I'll get the land that I control, but more importantly, momentarily because I held off of Germany, I can uh, held off of Berlin, I can relatively quickly finish the war and whatever land they annexed, I can just turn around and annex. And now this is what the world looks like. Extremely powerful. Now I'm going to go after Russia or go after the Soviet Union. I need their some of their eastern states, the ones that border the Pacific. I'm fairly certain I need them and might as well just, you know, get them taken, get them out of the way so they don't cause any more um, issues for us. Our army is now significantly stronger. I think we might have three times as many mills. We have air power. We're reaching superior air power. So there's one nice little pocket with our trucks now, motorized trucks just moving right around. These are 27 widths. Too easy. Another pocket. 
and it doesn't take too much longer with battle planning before we, particularly since we did do collabs on the Soviet Union, before we capitulate them as well. We will annex all of them. And, oh, what's this? Oh yeah, Japan declares war on us and my puppet is enforcing the Moreau Doctrine? Well, good luck. Yeah, Japan's not gonna listen to you, little Midway. Thanks for the war support, thanks for the stu Oh, Japan is apparently fearful of little Midway. Yeah, I'm not sure that's working in a practical sense, but it is, I guess it's working as intended. It's not meant to be an exploit. We're also gonna to start to just eat up all of the small South American countries. Each justification takes about 30 days and there's like 10 we need to do or 12. So it's gonna take a year to go country by country. I'm particularly satisfied with Peru because earlier on Peru took one of my cores. I guess I should say we sold them one of our cores. I mean, they didn't take them before, um, before the civil war. So now we've got it back. As we wind down this run, let's now go after Japan. Again, technically none of Japan's main islands are part of the achievements, but it does just make it a little easier to take everything. I mean, maybe it's not even easier, but it just makes it more certain. As usual, we do not capitulate a fascist country. If a fascist country is at war with a non-fascist country, we will hold them at bay and uh, watch the armies swirl all about. This is a little bit of an over overkill as far as the number of troops, and they're all mismatched. They're, I don't know how many overlapping attacks as everyone moves over, and then we move on to China. We just want to get rid of everyone on our little land, go to war with every country that controls our land, and as we capitulate China, 10% war support. And unfortunately, we do know China likes to puppet, certainly on historical, but it couldn't be too bad, right? How bad could it actually be? Well, they got most of the land, and let's see, where did... Where are my where are my troops? Whoa! Teleport! Yeah, they all get teleported out. This is part of the uh, solution paradox made to the Order 66 uh, result. Not that we would ever exploit Order 66, but it teleports your troops out. No big deal, no big deal. Let's finish off Japan, put them to the peace trail, and oh, okay, China's still a major. But that's actually not a problem either because China is much smaller, at least in this run, we were able to take the land to the west and China, even as a puppet, doesn't have any troops, so we just run our scouts around, and eventually we will capitulate and then bring them and Japan to the peace deal as well. And peace deal it is. That's the last of our wars. Now we need to move our communist support to 60, so we took three communist advisors, and we're looking for a little event here. I'm looking for a pop-up that I can click that will cause me to go communist. And I didn't remember whether that happened after 50% or, you know, how far did I have to wait? As it turns out, I need to wait till 60% and then I can click the button hold national referendum. And now I am communist. Our country is now communist. And that guy actually has some pretty good traits. So I probably could have uh, gone earlier. And now that we're communist, we have, we have completed the achievement, red hot chili peppers. We completed Ring of Fire earlier technically since we took the land a while ago and now that we've completed red hot chili peppers let's start releasing all of those little nations one by one I don't know, it's like 10 12 um, when you do your achievement run you can see which ones you need to release but once you, you release all of them you you are technically you can't complete chili peppers or red hot chili peppers after that so you must go communist before you complete that but now that we've completed that here in December 1943, we have completed the last of the three achievements. Well, this is a lot of fun. I really enjoy playing the Mapuche. Uh, they're a fun little nation. Yugoslavia lives on. I never, I never went to war with them, and the Axis never went to war with them, so I feel pretty good. I, I felt a little guilty taking so much lend-lease from them, but the fact that they live on makes me happy. And those are those nice little countries. Well, this was a lot of fun. I hope I enjoyed playing it. I hope you enjoyed watching it. I hope it helps out. If you have any questions or comments or any things that you'd like to see, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. I hope you have a great day.